The afterburner ignites with a sound like controlled thunder. Steam erupts from the catapult track as 43,000 pounds of thrust hurls the F-35C Lightning II off the USS. Gerald R. Ford's deck at 165 miles per hour in under three seconds. Below, the South China Sea stretches endlessly, dotted with merchant vessels carrying $3.4 trillion in annual trade. Above, the pilot's helmet-mounted display paints a picture of the battle space that would have been science fiction just two decades ago. 360-degree infrared vision, radar signatures appearing and disappearing like ghosts, target data flowing seamlessly between aircraft, ships, and command centers across three time zones. This isn't just a fighter jet, it's a flying supercomputer worth $102 million that can see through its own airframe and deliver precision death from ranges that would make previous generations of pilots weep with envy. 1432 hours, 180 nautical miles southeast of Taiwan. Joint training exercise, Valiant Shield 2025 the most expensive weapons program in human history, is about to prove whether it was worth every controversial dollar. The F-35 Lightning II represents more than just another fighter aircraft. It's the cornerstone of a $2 trillion bet that stealth, sensor fusion, and strategic partnerships can maintain Western air dominance through 2070. When China unveiled its J-20 stealth fighter and Russia deployed advanced S-400 surface-to-air missile systems, the calculus of air warfare fundamentally shifted. Fourth-generation fighters suddenly found themselves outmatched in contested airspace. The F-35 was America's answer, a fifth-generation multi-role fighter designed to penetrate sophisticated air defense networks and coordinate attacks across domains that enemies couldn't see coming. Eight allied nations invested over $4.4 billion in development costs, creating the largest defense collaboration in history. The industrial supply chain spans 1,800 suppliers across 48 U.S. states and extends through every major NATO capital. The strategic equation was simple but profound. Whoever controls the information advantage in future conflicts wins before the first shot is fired. The Lightning II carries the designation F-35, but that single number conceals three distinct variants engineered for different warfare domains. The F-35A serves as the backbone for air forces worldwide. At $80 million per aircraft, it costs roughly the same as an advanced F-16, but the capability gap spans generations. While an F-16 carries weapons externally, broadcasting its radar signature like a beacon, the F-35A tucks everything inside, maintaining stealth while carrying four precision-guided munitions internally. Its AN-APG-81AESA radar can track baseball-sized objects at 165 nautical miles while simultaneously jamming enemy communications. Compare that to China's J-20 Mighty Dragon. While impressive on paper with its canard delta configuration and angular stealth shaping, the J-20 lacks the sensor fusion architecture that makes the F-35 a flying battlefield network. Its mechanically scanned radar sweeps back and forth like a lighthouse, revealing its position to anyone listening. More critically, the J-20 operates in isolation. Chinese pilots rely on voice commands and individual sensors, like fighting a networked team while blindfolded. The F-35B takes the concept even further. This short takeoff, chi vertical landing variant carries a Rolls-Royce lift fan that can redirect 18,000 pounds of thrust downward, enabling operations from amphibious assault ships or damaged airfields. It's the only supersonic STOVL fighter in existence. The F-35C, the carrier variant with larger folding wings, boasts 600 nautical miles of combat radius on internal fuel, outranging every carrier-based fighter in history. All three variants share 70% of their parts and speak the same digital language through the multifunction advanced data link. The development story began in the 1990s when Pentagon planners realized they faced a crisis. The Air Force's F-16s, Navy's F-A-18s, and Marine Corps AV-8B Harriers were all approaching obsolescence simultaneously. Running separate replacement programs would cost over $300 billion. Lockheed Martin, partnered with Northrop Grumman and BAE Systems, proposed an audacious alternative. One aircraft family to replace them all. 
the Joint Strike Fighter would leverage economies of scale to deliver fifth-generation capability at fourth-generation prices. The engineering challenges were staggering. How do you design an airframe that can handle carrier landings, vertical takeoffs, and conventional operations while maintaining stealth? How do you integrate sensors from six different contractors into a seamless picture? How do you write 24 million lines of flight-critical software that three different services can trust? The answer required reinventing military aviation from the ground up. Lockheed's Fort Worth facility became a laboratory for digital manufacturing, moving assembly lines, laser projection systems, and model-based engineering compressed development timelines while maintaining precision tolerances measured in thousandths of inches. Northrop Grumman's Palmdale facility manufactured center fuselages using automated fiber placement machines that could lay carbon fiber with robotic precision. BAE Systems in the UK contributed STOVL expertise gleaned from decades of Harrier operations, along with advanced electronic warfare systems. The program faced skeptics and setbacks. Weight problems in the early 2000s forced redesigns. Software integration proved more complex than anticipated. Critics questioned whether one aircraft could truly excel in three different mission sets. By 2006, the first F-35A rolled out. By 2015, the Marines declared initial operational capability. The Air Force followed in 2016, and the Navy achieved IOC in 2019. But the real test would come in combat scenarios that pushed the aircraft's revolutionary capabilities to their limits. The exercise begins with a simulated Chinese carrier strike group operating 200 nautical miles east of Taiwan. Their formation bristles with defensive capability. Type 05 2D destroyers equipped with HHQ-9 surface-to-air missiles capable of engaging targets at 125 nautical miles. Type 05 4A frigates providing medium-range air defense and J-15 Flying Shark Fighters patrolling at medium altitude with their complement of PL-12 and PL-15 air-to-air missiles. Below the surface, a Type 039 submarine lurks in the thermal layer, its sonar operators listening for acoustic signatures of approaching American vessels. The Chinese formation represents a sophisticated integrated air defense system with overlapping radar coverage and mutual support. From the Chinese perspective, this looks like an impenetrable defensive bubble. Their radar operators track the approaching American carrier group, noting FA-18 Super Hornets in standard formations. What they don't see are four F-35Cs flying 50 nautical miles ahead, invisible to everything except the most advanced low-frequency radars. The Lightning IIs aren't just avoiding detection. They're painting the entire Chinese formation with targeting data. Each F-35 sensors work in concert, creating a three-dimensional picture of enemy positions and movement patterns. The AN-APG-81 radars operate in low probability of intercept mode, using frequency-hopping algorithms that make their emissions nearly impossible to detect. Through the multifunction advanced data link, this intelligence flows back to the carrier strike group in real time, transmitted in encrypted burst communications that last mere milliseconds. The Super Hornets suddenly know exactly where every Chinese ship is located, which radars are active, and which weapon systems pose the greatest threat. But the F-35s aren't finished with their reconnaissance. Their electro-optical targeting systems lock onto the Chinese destroyer's bridge structure, automatically calculating firing solutions for AGM-158CLR, ASM anti-ship missiles. The distributed aperture system spots the submarine's periscope breaking the surface 30 nautical miles away. Intelligence that immediately flows to a lurking P-8 Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft waiting beyond the horizon. The Chinese formation is being dissected in real time by sensors they can't see, transmitting on frequencies they can't intercept, to weapons platforms they don't know are there. When the engagement begins, it's not a battle. It's a route orchestrated by information dominance. The lead F-35C fires two LRASM missiles in rapid succession. The weapons drop from internal bays and immediately go dark, navigating toward their targets using inertial guidance. To Chinese radar operators, the missiles simply materialize out of nowhere. The first LRASM slams into the destroyer's superstructure, its 450-pound warhead detonating among the radar arrays. 
the second punches through the hull below the waterline. As damage control teams scramble, the remaining F-35s launch a coordinated strike against Chinese air cover. AIM-120D AMRAAM missiles streak toward J-15 fighters from beyond visual range. The Chinese pilots never see their attackers. Their mechanically scanned radars are still sweeping empty sky when the missiles impact. The first J-15 disintegrates in a brilliant fireball as the AMRAAM's expanding rod warhead shreds its port wing. His wingman suffers a more catastrophic hit. The missile detonates directly beneath his cockpit. In four minutes, the Chinese defensive formation transitions from confident patrol to burning wreckage scattered across 20 square nautical miles of ocean. The exercise demonstrates what military analysts call the new reality of combat. Whoever achieves information dominance first wins decisively before traditional combat indicators even suggest a battle has begun. The strategic implications extend far beyond a single training scenario. Back in Brussels, NATO planners run their own calculations based on observed F-35 performance metrics. Norwegian F-35s operating from dispersed airfields in the Arctic can share targeting data instantaneously with Italian F-35s launching from Cavour-class aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean. British F-35Bs operating from Queen Elizabeth-class carriers can coordinate seamlessly with US AFF-35, A's based at Wask Air Base in Poland, creating an integrated air defense network that spans the entire European theater. Dutch F-35s can provide targeting data for Finnish F-35s engaging threats over the Baltic, while Danish F-35s coordinate with future German F-35s to create overlapping defensive coverage across Northern Europe that Russian fourth-generation fighters simply cannot penetrate without suffering prohibitive losses. This level of interoperability was impossible with previous aircraft. F-16AS from different nations required extensive modifications to share basic targeting information. The F-35's common architecture means pilots trained in Texas can fly missions with squadrons from eight different countries without missing a beat. Behind every F-35 lies a supply chain that directly employs 254,000 American workers across 48 states, from aerospace engineers in California to precision machinists in Ohio to software developers in Texas. Pratt & Whitney's East Hartford facility runs F-135 engine production on a 24-7 schedule, with workers assembling the world's most powerful fighter engine using advanced metallurgy and precision manufacturing techniques. Northrop Grumman's Palmdale plant operates as a marvel of automated manufacturing, where robotic systems fabricate center fuselage sections with tolerances measured in thousandths of inches before shipping them to final assembly lines in Fort Worth, Texas and Camarie, Italy. BAE Systems facilities in Lancashire and Samlesbury manufacture aft fuselage sections and sophisticated electronic warfare systems. Drawing on decades of experience in advanced aerospace manufacturing and cutting-edge electronic defense technologies. When Finland ordered 64 F-35 as to replace its aging F-A-18 Hornets, it wasn't just buying aircraft, it was joining a defense ecosystem that spans continents and integrates seamlessly with NATO command structures. Walk through Lockheed Martin's Fort Worth facility and you'll see technician Sarah Chen calibrating helmet-mounted display systems that give pilots superhuman vision. Former Marine pilot Colonel James Rodriguez oversees flight test operations, drawing on 20 years of combat experience to refine tactics that will keep future air crews alive. At BAE Systems' Samlesbury facility, software engineer David Thompson leads teams responsible for electronic warfare systems that must defeat emerging threats from China's PL-15 air-to-air missiles and Russia's latest S-400 variants. His algorithms determine whether an F-35 can detect, classify, and successfully counter threats that didn't exist when the aircraft was first designed. These aren't abstract engineering challenges pursued in academic isolation. They're life and death problems solved by dedicated professionals who understand that every line of code every manufacturing tolerance and every design decision could determine the outcome of future conflicts that may determine the survival of democratic societies. 
the F-35 program has created a generation of aerospace workers who think in terms of global integration rather than national boundaries. When an F-35 experiences a maintenance issue in Norway, the solution might come from a parts depot in Australia or software patches developed in Texas. The manufacturing innovations developed for Lightning II production are already flowing into next-generation programs. The digital thread that connects design, manufacturing and sustainment across multiple continents serves as a prototype for how future weapon systems will be developed. The Lightning II has proven that stealth isn't just about radar cross-sections, it's about information dominance. In an era where warfare happens at the speed of light across multiple domains simultaneously, the side that can see, understand and act first possesses an almost insurmountable advantage. Perhaps the most profound lesson from the F-35 program isn't technological, it's strategic. When eight nations pooled their resources to develop a common fighter, they created more than just an aircraft. They forged bonds of interoperability that make NATO's Article 5 commitment tangible in ways that previous generations of equipment never could. An attack on one ally becomes an attack on an integrated air defense network spanning continents. The deterrent effect of this unity extends far beyond any individual platform's capabilities. The F-35 Lightning II stands as testament to what allied nations can achieve when they commit to shared vision and sustained investment. At $2 trillion over its lifetime, it represents the most expensive bet in military history. But as tensions rise across multiple theaters simultaneously, that investment may prove to be the foundation upon which Western air superiority rests for the next half century. The question facing defense planners isn't whether the F-35 was worth its cost. Combat results have already answered that. The question is whether the lessons learned from its development can be applied quickly enough to stay ahead of adversaries who are studying every aspect of its success. In the end, the Lightning II's greatest achievement might not be its technological prowess, but its demonstration that democratic allies can still accomplish the impossible when they work together toward a common goal. If you were advising NATO on the next major collaborative defense program, would you prioritize sixth generation fighters, space-based systems, or autonomous swarms? What do you think represents the biggest threat to continued Western air dominance? This is DIB Dispatch, where billion dollar projects meet battlefield reality.